All right, it is 1.30, let's get this party started. Thank you all for skipping nap time after lunch to come and join us today uh, for this talk. Um, let's see, we are going to go over the 30 minute content strategist from content to plan. You might not necessarily think that you can get a content strategy done in 30 minutes, but I guarantee you it will be low quality. Um, what we're really going to focus on today is we're going to, what we're really going to do is we're going to talk about the process and how it doesn't really have to be long and involved. It just has to be thoughtful and well applied. So what I'm going to do now, uh, because I want to keep the pressure on, I want to make sure that your pizza gets delivered in 30 minutes or less. I've started a timer for 30 minutes. So if we get in under 30 minutes, fantastic. If we don't, well, that's my fault for not planning better. So, all right, so first, let's go ahead. I wanna tell you just a little bit about me. My name is Randy Ost. I am the creative director at Four Kitchens. Um, at Four Kitchens, uh, you all know all of the great Drupal and technology stuff that we do, but we also do content strategy, we do de design systems, and we get results. Um, and part of the reason that I'm here today is to talk about some of our content strategy work. Uh, everything that I've got to share with you today, uh, I'm doing the talking, but one of my coworkers did most of the thinking, our delightful content strategist, and I thank her for all of her work that I've stolen today. <laughs> all right. So let's kind of zoom out a little bit and let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Um, we've got three things that we really want to focus on today because we've only got 30 minutes. Um, we want to talk about what your content maturity is, like how, what's your strategy look like? Where do you sit on a five-point scale? And why is it important to know where you sit on that five-point scale? I want to talk about strategy statements. We're going to do this Mad Lib style. There are many ways to put together a core content strategy statement. The Mad Libs version is one that's usually engaging and when we run it for our clients, they end up pretty satisfied with it because um, it's a lot of fun. And then lastly, I want to talk about content templates because they're boring, but they're boring in the best way because they help you plan. So, and hey you, yes you can do it. And if you know where that's from, you're old like me. So, um, about a year ago, my team, the creative team at Four Kitchens, had a little bit of idle time, and we had a document inside of Google Docs that we called our Content Strategy Maturity Questionnaire. And it was a series of questions that we gave to clients. They answered them, we gave them a score, and that score set them somewhere on a five-point scale. Well, we had ourselves a lot of extra time, and being creative individuals, we actually decided that we were going to put this together as a website so that we could share it with everyone else in the world. So what we've done is we've put together um, a link to this quiz. And just so everyone knows, I will be posting a link to this FigJam board and the resources inside the description of this talk. That way you can find it. Um, it will probably be later this afternoon when you can find it, but it'll be there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and take the content strategy quiz. So let me just go ahead and pop on over to a web browser. This is contentstrategyquiz.com. We gave it that brilliant name. And we have the big take the quiz button. Uh, underneath that, if you just need a little bit of more convincing, you know, we're talking about content and your content strategy and why that might matter to you. Um, you know, we want to make sure that people who are coming to your websites and are engaging with you and your company and your organization um, are engaging with it the way that you want it to be engaged. Um, and so that's why it's kind of important. And then we've just got like more stuff like why take the quiz? And then, you know, who made it? It was made by Four Kitchens. Um, we very specifically didn't overly brand it as Four Kitchens. We gave it its own branding because we want everyone to use this and we don't want people to feel like, oh, I'm an agency and I'm using another agency's like questionnaire. Um, we really wanted to, to make the world a better place by having this quiz out there. So the quiz is 10 questions, which sounds like a lot. Um, it's not really. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to answer these questions. So um, for the purposes of today, we're going to assume that like my team at Four Kitchens, the creative team, has decided that we need our own content strategy and that we need to figure out, like, how are we doing blog posts and social posts? Should we do videos? Should we do podcasts? Spoiler, we've got a new podcast. Um, and so. Let's uh, kind of figure this out. So um, the first question is our documented content strategy. Is it used by all content creators to guide their work? Yes. 
Uh, does it identify our audiences? Yes. Describes the kind of content that we'll publish? Yes, because we have this existing. Um, defines what content should achieve for users and business? We don't really have that, um, so we're gonna not check that. Is reviewed for relevancy and refined as needed? We don't look backwards. And we don't use a documented content strategy. This is for people who maybe, maybe you don't have a content strategy. That's okay, the first step is admitting you have a problem. So we're gonna go on, and yes, you're gonna watch me fill out this form, but that's because I, you know, I need to pad time for 30 minutes. So we've connected with our internal teams and leaderships to you know, understand the goals and objectives and needs. I talk to, the, to our business strategy team all the time, so yes. Um, identify internal subject matter experts. Yes, I work with a bunch of smart people. Um, determine existing capabilities and skill sets. I'll leave that unchecked. Uncover pain points or content challenges. Um, yes, I, I talk to, to, um, to our internal teams and leadership about that. Uh, do I talk to them about gathering insights from prior or ongoing research? Nope. Um, and then there's none apply if that none applies for you. So let's go ahead and hit next. And you can see here, we're just kind of filling this out. So have you defined what success looks like by setting measurable goals and objectives for the content you publish? That means like if you put a blog post up, do you know why you put a blog post up? Is it because someone told you to put a blog post up? Sometimes the answer to that is yes, and that's okay. Everybody likes to keep their jobs. So. Um, let's see, we sometimes do that. So sometimes we know why we post blog posts and sometimes it's just because we wanna share. So let's hit next. Are we using analytics, data, or some type of key performance indicators to guide our content decisions? Nope. Uh, all right, well that's not really true. We, you know, we have data but we're not really confident in our process. Sorry, Cy, if you're in the room. Um, Let's go ahead here. Uh, do you have a clear understanding of the specific groups or types of people you want to reach with your content? Um, so yes, we, you know, as the creative team at Four Kitchens, we know exactly who we want to reach. Um, so that's good. Let's see, continuing on here. Our content creation and management guidelines. Ooh, are they supported by leadership? We have a great deal of support, which is great. Um, do we outline roles and responsibilities? Yes. Are they followed by everyone working with content? I'm gonna skip that one, because no. Um, specify our minimum quality standards, yes. Um, include workflows and approval process, yes. We've got a very extensive ClickUp that handles that. So let's go ahead and hit next. Do you review your content to confirm it has a clearly defined purpose, a way to be measured, and is accurate? Boy, is that a loaded question, right? Um, so we're gonna say we review some of this. Um, you know, sometimes we take a look at things and sometimes an emergency happens and that forces us to take a stronger look at things. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Um, do you have a list of all the people involved in creating content and their specific roles and responsibilities? Nope. Um, I mean, we have some of this. We know who to like talk, who talks to ghost writers to help our team. Like we have a lot of people with a lot of ideas and a lot of knowledge, but not a lot of time or expertise in writing articles. So instead of spending, you know, hours and hours trying to author an article that, you know, will have good information, but maybe isn't well written, we pair them up with a ghost writer to like write the content. So let's go ahead and hit next. Are you using any of the following to guide content creation? Ooh, let's see. Um, we have brand guidelines. Um, we've got a content planning calendar. Um, we don't have exclusive or inclusivity guidelines. Um, we don't have user journey maps as a designer that kills me. Um, voice and tone guidelines, yes. Content best practices, yes. We have a editorial style guide, yes. Um, we actually have like, it's very specific when it comes to headlines, how to capitalize. Um, search engine optimization, no. User personas, no. Web accessibility, yes, because accessibility is very important to us. Let's see, and we're on the very last question of the quiz now. So our content management system. So maybe you're using Drupal. Well, we use WordPress. Uh, so. <laughs> Listen, WordPress has a great many plugins that make like content marketing so much easier. I love Drupal. Sometimes, okay, before I get kicked off, let's answer these questions. <laughs> Our content management system. Does it automatically archive or delete content? No. 
Um, is it well documented and understood by users? Um, by the right users, yes. So I'm going to mark this as a yes. Does it support the findability and discoverability of content? Yes. Um, I don't know why that was pre-checked. Um, has appropriate content workflows in place? Yes, and makes it easy for anyone to publish, manage, organize, or repurpose content. Um, I'm gonna say yes, even though technically anyone is pretty pretty wide question. So this is, this is the series of questions that I've, I've answered. And whenever I get to the end here, well, that's actually pretty surprising. I was figuring we were gonna be a level three. Apparently I answered too many, too many things correctly to get to a level four. But the content strategy quiz has a series of levels, and each of those levels correspond to some information. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom out for a moment so we can see that there are five levels uh, within our like content review system. And level four is managed and sustainable, which that's great. But most people, most of the time, whenever they take this, because we've looked at the analytics for the quiz site and we've looked at the answers that we've gotten with our, uh, with our clients, and it's usually falling into the level two or level three realm, okay? Level five is, uh, I think only NPR does level five. Um, maybe a couple of other places, um, but basically, what each of these levels are, it's not to, it's to take stock of where you are. So for instance, with level two emerging, like your organization has made progress in developing the foundations for content strategy maturity. So this means that you've recognized that there's going to be a return on investment in focusing on content and creating some framework around it. Um, and then level three is just, you've kind of got that engine going a little bit more. And when you fill out the, the quiz, like I just did, and you get your results, um, you can email it to yourself if you wanna keep the results. But it also gives you some suggestions for next steps. Like for instance, with level four, it's regularly assess your, your strategy, nurture your community, strengthen content operations, and just you know giving you a few pointers for things to think about um, and move forward with. And each of these different levels there are things that you can do even at level five, NPR could be doing better. Um, and so, you know, this allows us to kind of recognize where we are and provide some guidance. And so this is a great tool for self-evaluation. You don't have to share this with your boss. You can just fill this out yourself for your team, like I did in public on video, and then just take actions to be like, okay, I'm super smart, and so I'm going to do these things. So that's how you kind of figure out where you are in your content maturity kind of like lifeline. So the next thing that we're doing um, is that we're gonna come down here and we're going to look at creating a core content strategy statement. Um, I hate the name uh, core content strategy statement. I, I really wish there was something more alliterative or interesting that I could call it, um, but its name really expresses its purpose and that's basically an, a statement that is why are you making content, who are you making content for, and what do you expect that content to do? Uh, and so um, what we came up with, and by we, once again, I say my coworker, uh, came up with an exercise that we call the Mad Libs edition. And this allows um, us to run in a whiteboard and exercise with people. So you can take this whiteboard yourself, or at least the idea for this, and take it to your teams and be like, hey, everyone's going to fill out this Mad Lib for what we do and we're gonna figure out and synthesize and look at what everyone has put together. So I'm gonna fill this out here live. It's gonna be great. So first thing that we have here is, hold on, I'm gonna, the timer's still running, I didn't turn it off, it's still up there. Um, my organization publishes one or two descriptive adjectives, content that helps them so let's, let's see, we're once again taking this from the point of view of the uh, creative team at Fork Kitchen. So our organization publishes, um, oh, what is it? Uh, design system stuffs. Uh, and what else do we do? We do content mix strategies. You can see I take this very seriously. All right. 
and content that helps uh, helps my organization, the creative team, reach people, uh, accomplish goal, help people create better content. Boy, my typing is terrible. All right, uh, so we publish design system stuffs and content mix strategies, content that helps uh, helps the creative team help people create better content and uh, display thought leadership. Everyone's bosses loves the word term thought leadership, right? Yeah, you can't go wrong putting that in. And we do that by making clients smarter and better at their work. All right, and by making clients smarter and better at their work uh, and they feel empowered, informed, and I'm going to say entertained. Because if you can't tell by now, I'm kind of goofy. Um, and convincing them to, so convincing these people to uh, reach out with questions. And what else do we want them to do? Uh, we want them to work with us. We're an agency, we gotta boil it down to that, right? So what I've just done in that uh, three minutes, let's bring that back, uh, in that three minutes is kind of broken down Mad Lib styles that like the creative team publishes design system content and content strategy content um, that helps people create better content and displays thought leadership from us by making clients smarter and better at their work and make them feel empowered, informed, and entertained, convincing them to reach out with questions and to work with us. And so this is not great. This is actually terrible. Um, I'm glad this is recorded. Um, but what happens is, is if you get a bunch of people in a room filling this out, you'll start to see commonalities. And you'll start to see things and you'll be like, okay, so content mix strategies has definitely got to go. But somebody else has written something much better there and you can bring them together into a good example. Which I do have a good example. Um, so the example, the real example, um, is my organization publishes values-driven, actionable content that helps us set knowledge free and establish ourselves within the industry as a top-notch creative team by making our peers, clients, and prospects feel inspired, confident, and motivated, convincing them to improve their processes and make informed decisions. So this example that we've got right here is, is the real example um, based on like the creative team getting together and going through this exercise. And so you can see how in just a few minutes with a bunch of people, you can come together for a content strategy statement. Now, I'm not going to get too into the weeds right now about how to use a core content strategy statement, but what it is is it is basically a North Star for creating content. So whenever you have an idea, like when we as the creative team have an idea for content, um, we want to shine it through this, through this lens. We want to say, like, is the piece of content that we're producing, the talk that I'm giving right now, does this content fit into our content strategy? Like, this is definitely setting knowledge free because I'm here today to help you help yourself with all of the things that, I, that I'm sharing. I want uh, you, our peers, to feel inspired, confident, and motivated, and I'm hoping that this talk will do that for you. And I want, I want this to convince you to improve your processes and make informed decisions. So I think that this talk today really leans into the core content strategy statement that my team has put together. So, um, so that's great. You know, it also helps us stop doing things like posting memes to LinkedIn because that's not really like, you know, doesn't fit with that strategy. I will post that to my personal uh, LinkedIn. All right. 
So the last part, we're doing great on time. I've still got 10 minutes left and then we can take questions um, because I want to help you. I want to talk about um, templatizing the content creation process. So often when content needs to be created, you create a Word doc or a Google doc, you type in a bunch of things, you share your links with your peers, you get a bunch of notes, edits, suggestions, comments, um, and then after several weeks of turmoil, you've narrowed it down and gotten it approved uh, and everything's good, all the, the, uh, all the tea has been drank and all of the, the oh, darn, sorry. <laughs> Crossing T's and dotting I's is one of my favorite like phrases for this, but then I heard someone said like drink all the tea and cover all the eyes. I don't know, I'm not remembering the quote right. Thank you all for, thanks for the pity laugh, I appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, when you do that, you're missing out on the iceberg that goes with content. Um, that iceberg that goes with content is stuff like metadata. When you're posting an article, do you have a short description of the article? Do you have the, what's the page title, you know, for, for robots, for search engines? And how does that different, differ from the page title for the humans reading it? Do you have a sharing image? Do you have, like, you know, what's your target audience? What do you want this content to do? There's, there's a lot of these questions that maybe you've internalized and know the answer to those, or maybe you have good habits. Like I always write a, like the metadata for an article whenever I write an article, because uh, I'm type A and that's the way I do it. But if you're, if you're not like that, creating page tables, okay, is kind of the way to go. And page tables can exist however you want them to exist. You can put page table like fields in your content management system, you know, Drupal or WordPress, if you run your website on that. Um, or you can put it as a structure within your Google Doc or your Word Doc. Um, it can be a completely separate thing. It can be part of the process. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put it or how you use it. It's the thinking behind it that helps. So let's go into the example page table that I have here and talk through why some of these decisions have been made. So zooming in here, um, basically, you know, we start off with like, what's the name of the page? What is it? You know, uh, blog post about DrupalCon content strategy talk. Great. The primary purpose of, of the page. Like, what does it need to do? What are the goals? What's it supporting? Um, we created a, a blog post on Four Kitchens blog promoting this talk. And, you know, the primary purpose of that was we wanted to promote this talk. <laughs> So sometimes it's that simple. It doesn't have to be an essay. It just has to be real simple and saying like, you know, we want to do some promotion. Great. Who's the target audience? People going to DrupalCon, people who might watch it later. Um, our secondary audience for it, maybe it's, you know, people who are interested in doing content strategy or curious about our content strategy services because we're going to like tag it appropriately. Then we have like tasks, user stories. Like, we like to ask ourselves, like, why are the people here and what do they need and what do they value? So, um, you know, you're at DrupalCon, you know what a user story is. Basically, we're writing a user story for the content. You know, as a attendee of DrupalCon, I want to see this person teach me content strategy in 30 minutes so that I can take that back to my team and be a hero. You know, like, just basically kind of taking it and doing it that way. And then kind of the required like information that goes with it, the meta information. What's the page title tag? If it's the same as the, the name of the, like the H1 on the, on the page, that's great. Just write it down. Page description, like making sure that it fits the, the right size so that it doesn't get cropped on like Google search results until they just do AI results. Um, social sharing thumbnail, you know, do you want a special image to go with this? Um, and the URL suffix, so domain name slash whatever that string is going to be, like you need to think through what that name is going to be. Like sometimes whatever dynamic thing you have going on is perfectly fine, but maybe um, it strips out some of the like bridge words, like and the to at you know, and maybe you want it to be, you know, to have those things. And so you specify here so that when it gets entered, you know, you don't let the dynamic thing do what it's going to do. You have picked what you want it to be. Like, for instance, um, the, this talk is like 30-minute content strategist, colon, word, 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 word. 
Um, I don't want that as the URL. I just want 30 minute content strategist as the URL. So let's see. Going on here, we've got a second page. And what this is, this is setting up the content and putting the content as prioritized content. Some pages, when you do a blog post, it's really nice, it's pretty easy. It's like, I have the article content. That is the number one thing on the page. Great. Um, and then maybe you'll have related content. That's the second biggest thing, or the second most important thing. But when you're creating pages that aren't blog posts, when you're creating things like a home page, or a landing page, or a program page, like in higher education, you wanna promote a program, you have to start thinking in terms of what is a priority and what is a lower priority. Not in a visual way, but in a, like, this is more important and this is less important. So that when you go to build the page, you know, whether you have to involve a developer or not, you know where you're pointing people to. Like for instance, if this was a landing page for a program at a university, priority content is apply now. Like that's absolutely important. And so you have to make sure that that's in the right places on the page. And so basically it's just kind of taking the content of the page and force ranking it. Um, just, and remember, just because it's lower on the page, like secondary content or tertiary content, that doesn't mean it can't be big and bold and beautiful. It just means it's less important and you want the other things to shine more. And then just content governance and life cycle. This is one of those things that typically gets kind of left off, like who is listed as the author or authors for the content. Um, do you have a topic expert? Like maybe, you know, maybe I'm the author of this presentation, but the expert is really over there. Um, you know, so making sure that you, you get things fact-checked, I did not get things fact-checked, um, is, you know, very important. Then the editor, who is the person who is reading it who didn't write it? Because I don't know about you, but I love everything that I write and it's terrible and I need an editor. And then lastly, um, this is one of my favorite things, what is the review and archive like time scale? How often does someone have to look at this to make sure that the content isn't old, expired, creating problems for you? Um, and do you need to like make sure that it's archived? Like if you have an event that happened last month on your site, does it still need to be there? I say no, but your answer might be different. So, um, so I do have a filled out example, um, but basically it just kind of is, I'm not gonna walk you through it step by step, but basically it's, it's just like, actually you know what, I'm gonna do it. I've got two minutes and 45 seconds, let's do this. All right, so an agency about page. All right, this is the page table. I've got the primary purpose. Talk about who we are as a company, why our values are important to us and provide a list of our team members. The target audience, people who want to work for us and with us. Okay, we know that our about page for Four Kitchens isn't for potential clients, it's for, it's for potential peers, people who want to work with us. They want to know more, more about us. So um, our user story for it, as a person looking for a job, I want to learn about what working at this agency will be like so that I know if I want to work there. And then meta information, page title tag about the agency, page description to be determined, perfectly valid, sometimes, Sometimes you answer questions later. Uh, social sharing thumbnail, use the default image in alt text. And then the URL suffix should be slash about. All right, and then we go into the content. And the priority content is a hero area with a headline subhead and hero image. And then we share our values and why they are important to us. Um, so that is the number one priority content for the page. The secondary content is an interactive list of our team with a filter by role, so design, engineering, et cetera. And then our tertiary content is a call to action to apply to work for us. And you know, given our target audience, it might seem weird that our tertiary content is the call to action, but that's because we just want people to learn about us. And if we want them to apply for a job at Four Kitchens, we're, that's something that happens separately. 
Like that typically we push to various job boards um, and that's how a lot of those applications come in. But of course, if we have open roles, we want people to be able to apply for them. But this page isn't about a specific role or a specific time. This is about telling our story of who we are so that people can know that. And then lastly, content governance. Who is the author? Um, it's myself, Randy Ost, and the admin team. Um, and for, you know, the admin team is for the list of like the team and their titles. I don't keep track of everyone's titles. I barely know my own. Um, topic expert, um, the admin team, because most of the pages are team list. The editor is the admin team for when people come and go, so they're gonna be responsible for reviewing the page. And the, um, the review and archive time scale is review the page during quarterly planning. So that way, in case something gets missed, it's taken care of. So, all right, got five seconds. Did we meet our goals today? Did we learn about where we sit on content? <clears throat> Sorry, the microphone cut out for a moment. All right, did we meet our goals today? Did we, did we figure out how to, to where we are with our content strategy maturity? There are five levels that we've defined and we can figure out where we are uh, and learn how we can get better. And also know that it is not uncommon to fall backwards a level sometimes or to go forward a level. Like everybody has good seasons and bad seasons whenever it comes to this, except for NPR. They're apparently always perfect. We went through strategy statement Mad Libs, and we showed how easy and fun it could be to create a core content strategy statement to focus your content around. And we also talked about content templates, those page tables, where you take the information that you need for content to be successful and to, um, to be able to, um, to utilize that and to systematize what you're doing. And these are all things that you can take with you uh, and, and apply this afternoon if you want to. Skip your next session. Um, at this point, um, the talk is over because I'm out of time, but Q&A does not count towards the 30 minutes, which is fantastic. It's almost like I planned this well. Spoiler, I did not. So I have in front of me right here on this chair, you may or may not have seen, there's a microphone. If you have a question, I would ask that you come up and ask the question in the microphone so that it can be recorded for, uh, for Drupal, uh, for, the, for the video that goes up on YouTube. Um, I know it's a pain to get out of your chair and to come up and ask a question, but it's really useful for people watching the video later because I am terrible at rephrasing the question and coming back around. So if you have any questions, please come up and ask them. I can stand here all day. <laughs> all right, well then I guess I would like to ask, if you found this useful today, please raise your hand. Awesome. Awesome, I, I, you did not raise your hands. Um, <laughs> they're my coworkers, it's okay. Um, there we go, all right. Well, I mean, you know, we need to make sure. Um, so I guess with that, we're going to, to move to conclude. Um, as you exit uh, the room today, um, there is going to be a videographer who may ask if you would like to be interviewed about this session. We're, we're very actively recording some videos to try and promote some of the work that we do. So if you would be so kind as to, to answer a couple of questions on film, that would be awesome. If you do not want to be recorded, we do not want to record you. Walk past them politely. <laughs> so thank you all so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of DrupalCon and have fun. <laughs>